Omar Parid was CTO for Obama America, Obama for America, but also now builds paradigm shifting technology. I also love the fact, Harper, that on your website it says probably one of the coolest guys ever. It's true. It it's is. True. It's a, I only deal in facts. Okay, on to the facts then of what you're going to be talking to the audience stood behind us at the moment. They're here, they're high net worth individuals, and they want to know about the future of technology. What is the key issue that we're talking to you about? Well, big data, really, isn't it? Well, I think data is going to be, or just keep be being this huge issue within technology. Specifically, it's untapped yet. Like, we see a lot of data usage right now, but the future is going to be crazy. You have all these amazing startups that are doing really great things. You have great companies that are doing good stuff, whether it's targeting or making a better service for an individual. It's interesting now, but it's going to be amazing in the future. And so data is the glue. It's the important thing. Data is the glue. It adds to our efficiency yeah. in terms of the way of life. But there's also a lot of backlash, a lot of yeah. concerns. You've got Google negotiating with the EU at the moment, for example. Who is responsible for our data? Is it you and me at the moment? Well, I think it's mixed. In many things, I think it's the individuals, so you and I, but also the companies who are holding the data, and then you know various utilities that are that are transacting with data, whether it's financial data or whether it's social data. Um, all of these things, all of these kind of individuals and corporations, they need to be uh, responsible for the data they hold. So I, I, I'm waiting for the day when, when the organizations that are holding the data are actually taking responsibility for their data instead of just kind of uh, abandoning, uh, I don't know what they're abandoning, just as soon as they get hacked or as soon as they have a problem, they're just kind of like, oh, not our problem. And that's frustrating. And what barriers can they put in place to ensure that you and I are protected to a greater extent? Well, I think it has to be more than just reacting when they are hacked. I think it has to be before they are hacked. It has to be about security. It has to be making sure that they are... I mean, honestly, it's like just safe data usage. It's the same way we would expect someone who's driving a truck around to be a safe driver, you know, delivering our goods. If, if, if we need to have these people be safe users of, their, of our data. But the hackers keep getting more and more ways and wonderful and means of being able to hack our data. How can they keep up with the, the new ways in which they're managing to break down those barriers that are so yeah. quickly being formed? It will, it will always be a cat and mouse game, but I think it's a cat and mouse game that we have to play in this world. And I think the, the alternative is to not play it, and I don't think that's a good alternative. I think we have to engage. And it also means that we have to invest in technology to solve these problems. You see, you know, in the U.S., you see all sorts of companies that are getting hacked because they have legacy technology. You see government organizations getting hacked because they have legacy technology. They haven't invested in technology to save and protect data recently. What companies should we be looking to that actually are pushing the envelope in terms of building the right sort of capabilities when it comes to cybersecurity? That's a very, it's a very hard question to answer, but, you know, I, I always, I look at, there's a lot of companies that are doing interesting things. Mozilla is, is doing some interesting things. Facebook, Google, the big, you know, the ones we would expect. But then, you know, I, I'm interested in, you know, what are the small companies doing? Snapchat, been very reactive to problems and very good. Um, you know, those are the companies that I think will push the limits, both in how we use data and how our youth uses data, but then also in how they protect it. Um, and it's, the alternative, though, is very scary. We talk about the efficiency that you can actually take from the big data, the things you can learn, what you gleaned. What did you glean doing the Obama for America? You were CTO. What, yep. How did you track well, social media and... I'm going to change it a little bit because I don't know if I gleaned anything using the data, but what I did glean is that it's all about people. And so it's all about these amazing volunteers that worked with us. It's all about the people that we reached out to that, to, that were, we were able to turn into voters to get to vote. Um, none of this would have mattered without those people. And so it would have mattered if we had a huge pile of data. It didn't matter until the people acted. Um, interestingly, when we had the UK election, you saw the Labour Party, who eventually lost, doing an awful lot in terms of social media, employing Blue State Digital, which actually worked with the Obama campaign. What, do sometimes social media not enough? What, who's using social media the best in the US at the moment in the start of the campaign? I don't know who's using it the best because I've kind of not paid attention, um, mostly just because I've been busy running my own company. But I do, I do really, I guess the 
the key thing is, is that technology will not win an election. Technology will only help win an election. And without a good candidate, without a good party, if you don't have the people behind it, it doesn't matter how much you're tweeting or what you're tweeting about or the metrics. It just matters, you know, I mean, you have to couple those two things together. And so right now it's a little early to say who is doing a very good job in the U.S. Um, obviously, Donald Trump is prolific, um, you know, but Hillary has a very good game um, for tweeting, for building very good and relevant content. Um, is Twitter the relevant social media to be using? I think it depends on your audience, and that's the exciting thing. I mean, Tumblr is amazing for reaching a certain demographic. Twitter is amazing for reaching a certain demographic. Facebook is as well. But it isn't so much that there's a silver bullet. You really have to find, you know, the, the thing for your target. So if your target, for instance, is, is you know, young people, maybe Tumblr is perfect. Um, but then it shifts and changes so often, so quickly. I'm very excited about how people will be using Snapchat stories, because I think that's a really neat content form, and it has such a huge audience. Well, to keep an eye out for Harper Reed. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you. much indeed. Thanks for having Talking me. about the future trends, whether it be in technology, social media, and indeed how we can protect our big data, and what companies should be doing about it.